Good morning, Temple Gang. It's me, your boy. Roman Atwood is back, baby. Welcome to the Minecraft Guide. The Temple is done. Yeah, the biggest project that I've ever done is finally done. Actually done. And I think it turned out really nicely. Like, look at this thing. The top room is pretty sweet, too. More on that in the last episode, though. Today is this episode. So this time, I was trying to figure out what I wanted to do in today's episode. I put a poll on my Instagram story asking for what kind of episodes you guys wanted to see. Somebody slid up on that poll and said, hey, what about all those farms that you build that we never see? And I, uh, yeah, good point, good point. That's a good point. Today's farms. So up to this point in the series, we built a grand total of 21 farms, I think. I think I've totaled everything up correctly. Some farms have duplicates, two cow crushers, two zombie farms, but somewhere about 21 farms, other than all of the villager farms. Those things don't count. Today, we're going to switch it up a little bit. Take a look at every single farm that we built in the series up until this point. I'm going to rank them in order worst to best and tell you which farms are actually worth it in survival Minecraft. Two things, though. Remember, it all depends on what you want to do. If you want to just have like a bunch of eggs, then the egg farm is going to be your most important farm. Uh, and also, the second thing, got to tap that like button. Hold on a second. How long has that dirt been there? Has that been there like the whole time? Like since I was building this thing? Or is it the Enderman again? Oh boy, the Enderman. Absolute E tier farm. It would be like Z tier if that were a thing. The Nylium farm. The first farm today that we're gonna take a look at is this boy right here. So you walk up to it, you bone meal the netherrack, it turns into Nylium, which is great and all. It's nice to have a source of Nylium here. You never know when you need it, which is basically going to be never. And you can just go to the nether and get a bunch of the stuff. It's nice to have, but definitely the worst farm that I built. It's probably not worth it. Egg farm, egg farm, egg farm. Egg farm is the next farm, but to be clear, this is like miles ahead of the Nylium farm. It's at least useful, but really the only thing I can say about it, I mean, it's efficient. I have like a bunch of chickens inside of the thing and, and it gives me a bunch of eggs, but I don't use the eggs for anything right now. If I had like an automatic chicken cooker, this would be pretty useful because eggs would be good, but I, I don't. So the eggs are just piled up literally everywhere over here. It's efficient, but for what I do, kind of entirely pointless. I can't even sell these eggs. The next farm is straight across the world, right over here. It's a pretty new farm, uh, but it's a farm that I'm probably not going to use very much. So the pig farm. The pig farm is great with a villager. Uh, if you're going to sell pork chop to the villager, that's cool, but we have sweet berry right here, which is much easier. Also, to be honest, this pig crusher is basically like a worse version of the cow farm because you don't get any leather from it. And come on, they're pigs. Like, leave them alone. Like, they don't deserve it. So, pig farm is the next farm. It's cool and it's good. And if pigs were your only option, it would be pretty good. Pork chops are good food. But it, compared to cow farm, it's nothing. All right, so this farm is definitely worth building early on. To be clear, like early game, this is good. This was great when I didn't need very much paper. But now at this point, when I want to make a bunch of rockets and maybe I want to sell paper to a villager and just in general have a bunch of paper, this is not cutting it. Not at all. This sugarcane farm needs to be upgraded. And that's why it's so low on this list today. It's a good farm. And you would have to build this farm at some point. But late game, don't bother building it like this. Build it way bigger. Maybe flying machines, something like that. It just doesn't do the job, but it's cool. Okay, so the sugarcane farm is kind of like the first farm on this list that I would say is moving up to be like kind of worth it. Like at some point you'll have to build a sugarcane farm. This next farm maybe isn't necessarily worth it, but it's definitely useful if you want to use these wood types. Now I'm counting this farm as kind of a like, like a two in one. It's a warp farm and the nether plant farm because it's just super simple. You have the nether plant farm right here so you can actually use the warp wood farm. Without a nether plant farm, you wouldn't be able to grow the gigantic trees. It's not exactly like the best, most useful useful wood in the game because of the colors they're definitely intense and can be tricky to work with but they are really really cool and honestly i hate to say it but like the crimson wood it's easier to use than the warped wood and the warped wood is my favorite it's a tragedy to be honest on their own the nether plant farms wouldn't be worth it i mean you could bone meal the things but just not worth it but paired with this warped farm gets a little bit better the wood is really cool it would be easier though to get a lot of this stuff like on a gigantic scale by just going into the nether. Tree gang, tree gang. So these aren't much of farms. They're like growing pads, but they are essential. You, of course, need an area to grow trees in your world. This one really isn't a farm. Like, that is stretching it. It's just an area to grow trees, but I'm going to put it right here after the warp wood farm in this ranking. That's going to be like the 13th best farm. Yeah, trees. They're nice. Next farm, next farm. Oh, ah, I forgot to tell you guys about this. A villager escaped, and I trapped it in here. They can't figure this out. The villager traps here forever. It's a mason villager. It's not our actual mason villager, 
but you live here in the snow farm. Snow farm, next farm. Snow farm is nice, very easy to use. Grab a shovel, stand next to it, get infinite snow. It's amazing if you use a lot of snow. We've used some snow in some of the builds. I don't know if you can see it from here, but one of the villager houses has snow in it, which is really nice. Snow is a great building block. It's really cool, but quartz is definitely better. Once you have access to like a lot of quartz, the snow farm, unless of course you need to build with snow, isn't very useful. Snow farm will only get you snow. You can only build with snow or throw the snowballs. That's kind of pointless. Okay, hold up. This wandering trader has been like standing right here for like a couple episodes now. Like, like I swear, like since before the temple that we built, um, how is this thing still alive? Like, like how is it here? Aren't they meant to despawn or something? Like, what are you doing? Go. I don't want your sale. Okay, so this farm is a beaut. It's a giant farm. It's a cool farm. The sweet berry monstrosity. This thing over here, the manual one. This is the next farm. Now, to be clear, these farms at this point are pretty good farms. Like the snow farm, I would say it's a pretty good farm. It's pretty much worth it, in my opinion. And same with this gigantic sweet berry farm right here. I would say that this farm is, is worth it. You get a lot of sweet berries from this thing. You can take the sweet berries over to a villager, sell them. It's very, very easy to set up, too. You don't need to necessarily set it up how i set it up if you're into emeralds and and they like this and just sweet berries in general definitely absolutely worth it this thing is a pure profit machine and it's gigantic which is cool the bamboo farm is definitely one of those farms that i come visit a lot off camera and basically move bamboo out of it because it's a beast look at this thing it fills up like crazy bamboo farm is not entirely like the most usable thing in the world but you can take this bamboo convert it into sticks and then sell it to villagers and bamboo from this thing it, it, it's insanely easy insanely quick this thing just runs and runs and runs and there isn't really even that many bamboo plants i think we have one two three four five so that's five ten fifteen twenty twenty plants total and this thing fills up like constantly. I always come check this thing off camera and unload it into like random chests sitting around here. This thing is absurd. The best use for it though, definitely profit. Maybe if you will, but profit for sure. Turn the bamboo into sticks, sell them. If you don't like emeralds, don't build it. You know, I think about it. Uh, it kind of goes without saying, but there is an episode for every single one of these things. There's a playlist. Uh, burb, you're over here. Why are you here? There's an episode for every single one of these farms. Um, th there's a playlist. I'll go ahead and leave it on the end card. Maybe pop it up on screen now. But next farm, honeycomb farm. Now, uh, this is personal preference. I'm highly biased here. I like honeycombs. I think they're a useful building block. I think they look really nice. The texture is super clean. And bees. Bees are amazing. They're basically king. Honeycomb farm. Check this thing out. It's been running and running well. And I haven't even filled this thing up with bees. Like, the goal here is to get, like, a million bees inside of this thing. And I haven't done it. Absolutely not. No way. Not at all. Some of these hives don't even have bees still. Once 1.17 drops, honeycombs get a whole lot more useful because you can use them to wax copper blocks and craft candles. Right now, it's really just honeycombs. So not the most useful thing, but in the future, they're going to get pretty useful. So if you're keeping your world into 1.17, I don't know if I'll be keeping this world, to be honest, but honeycomb farm, absolutely worth it for the bees alone. They're adorable. They deserve a good life. So honeycomb farm. And the honeycomb farm is pretty easy to build. It's like an observer, dispenser, a couple pieces of redstone dust. Very, very easy to set up. Next farm this one right here we're back over at berry city this time the automatic version check it out this thing has been running not that much actually i'm pretty sure this farm isn't actually loaded in while we're over at the temple and it's brand new but automatic sweet berry farm if this thing were loaded in more and i think it will be once we start building more things in the jungle over here i plan to do that sometime maybe soon then it would be running over and over and over again getting me a ton of sweet berries which are really easy to use for emerald profit i have a butcher villager right in there i need to get a couple more in there to make it faster but emeralds the sweet berries is so simple the foxes just run and harvest them it's a really nice easy farm but it really comes down to how you want to play the game if you want to set this gigantic thing up and harvest it manually it will take time but you'll be able to get a whole lot more sweet berries faster or if you like to have this thing just run and you'd be patient and then eventually you'd come back and sell the sweet berries then this one would be better than the manual one okay so i have to come do some work in front of this farm very soon this area is getting really old like this but next farm pumpkin farm i honestly always forget that we built this pumpkin farm and it's so close to like our cathedral and basically the center of our world here but pumpkin farm it is so easy to set up and really really good at this point i have an absurd amount of pumpkins like check this out like so many pumpkins like way more pumpkins than i would ever need i think what i need to do is get a farmer villager and sell these things or just compost them or something but pumpkins are a great light source 
that aren't torches. I mean, nowadays I always just go with lanterns. I kind of spam lanterns everywhere, but jack-o'-lanterns are a really, really nice light source option. You can set a pumpkin down or a patch of pumpkins and it lights up an area. One jack-o'-lantern in there, of course. And yeah, they're really nice. Speaking of farms that I always forget about, this next farm is actually in the basement of a villager house, which definitely makes a trade to remember. Now, the ranking of these spawner farms is kind of really up to you. Like, if you have access to a spider spawner and none of the others, then the spider farm is by default, like, the best thing. If you have access to a skeleton farm, easy best, easy, easy. But uh, we don't talk about skeleton farms here. It's a tragedy. So next up is going to be the spider farm. They're pretty good for experience. Not the worst thing in the world. There's definitely things out there that are better, though. The big one from this farm here is, of course, the spider drops. We're talking string and spider eyes. The string is great for profit. As you can maybe tell here, it's all about profit this time. Emerald's easy right here. String to the villager, simple. It's insanely, insanely easy, which makes the spider farm so nice. Look at that. Nine emeralds right there from doing nothing. A block of emeralds. That's so simple. I always love a good spawner farm too. They're so easy to set up and they just have like nice vibes. Like, I don't know. I, I feel like it's weird, but like, it just reminds me of early game and a simple and like older Minecraft too, you know, that type of thing. Okay, so I haven't checked this farm in a long time. I'm very curious about it, but the creeper farm, what's going on here? Oh, that's going on here. I like it. I like it. Interesting. A bunch of random stuff in here too, but the big stuff, string and gunpowder. Oh, this thing is amazing. Next farm, a creeper farm. So if you use the elytra, the creeper farm is a no-brainer. You kind of need one of these things if you want to make a bunch of rockets, which for sure you kind of need to. What are you doing? You're swimming against the current. Stop that. Give up. Yeah, so creeper farms are really nice. They're pretty easy to set up. They don't require that much work, but this one, the clock in this one, is not the best. I've been meaning to come back in here and rebuild the clock because I always actually have to restart the clock off camera. Haven't mentioned it before, but yeah, the clock over time, because this farm gets loaded and unloaded, kind of messes up a little bit. It doesn't seem to really affect the farm too much, thankfully, but I don't like it. There's meant to be one signal moving through there, not like six or seven, whatever's going on over there. But it's basically a bunch of spawning pads with trap doors on it and then water that dumps out to flush everything off of the platforms. They go down to the bottom, get toasted up on the magma blocks, and then turned into gunpowder. Super easy to collect all right down here. And apparently, pretty efficient. I think what I'm going to do actually is take a break and unload this thing entirely so then we can come back later and check on it. For me, I mean, I, I like to build every single one of these farms in every world, but the creeper farm is the first, like, absolute must-have because the elytra, the rockets, the, the gunpowder for, like, TNT, now netherite, yeah, it's, like, essential nowadays. So creeper farm, creeper farm for sure. Next farm, zombie farm. I actually have two of these farms in this world. Zombie spawner experience farm. These things are so simple to set up. We have one over here in the jungle, and then I actually have one over at the flower forest base too, and then paired with like a villager. Is sell the rotten flesh over here because on its own rotten flesh is not very useful but the experience from this farm early game it's amazing this is a great source of experience before you have something like a gold farm or a blaze farm even like this is a really really solid farm okay so right now this farm is the most isolated farm by far this farm is the blaze farm i haven't been here in like a long time and that's really just because i have better experience farms now which is the main reason why i use this thing or used to use it of course, though, this farm will supply you with blaze rods, too, which I'm actually going to bring some back with me to the base. Blaze rods, amazing, amazing source of fuel because they're so easily renewable. All you need is a blaze spawner and then, like, a bunch of pistons, which kind of does get expensive. There's sticky pistons, too. But in the grand scheme of things, like, this thing is not bad. It's, like, pretty easy to set up, and the experience is just so good. It's one of the best experience farms in the game. Maybe the best spawner experience farm in the game, for sure, actually. And the fuel, the blaze rods, great in an auto smelter which i don't have but they're great fuel a brand new 1.16 farm the barter farm the barter farm this thing is so amazing we still need to use it more to get crying obsidian definitely need to make that happen i need only like 16 more i think and then i'll have enough to finish the nether hub but the barter farm is amazing if you have a bunch of gold like a gold farm or something absolutely set one of these things up because look at all the stuff that you can get from it like quartz nether bricks which are cool crying obsidian oh that's amazing like look at this you can get all of this stuff for gold which is just like it's so good like gold is pointless and, and you give it to the the piglins and you get all this stuff barter farm is an amazing farm i honestly might build one of these things on like a bigger scale like it would be less good looking and and i just cram like a bunch of piglins into the thing and get like a bunch of gold and funnel it you know in 
That could be crazy. I could get like so many free blocks, like literal building blocks, easily. It's crazy. All right, right before the top three, we have a farm that's right over here at the base of the temple, the villager breeder, villager farm. So I've let the villagers out of today's video for the most part, like all of the trades and all of that kind of thing, emerald farms, you know. But the villager breeder gets a pass because it's a farm for literal villagers, not like trading with villagers or anything. If you want to do anything with villagers, like iron farm, just big trading hall, have a bunch of villagers around your base, villager breeder is essential. It is necessary 1000%. And they're pretty easy to set up too. I mean, it's like farmland, couple villagers, villagers some beds over there and then i have modifications on this thing how did you get out of this thing they all get out of this thing which is like crazy and you're gonna cause problems right there actually trying to get to that bed that's a hard no i'm gonna have to deal with you somehow some type of villager breeder is an absolute must have even if you take the villagers from villages eventually you're gonna run out build one of these things free villagers oh uh, gamers we're in the top three now easy top three this is a no-brainer the gold farm it takes forever to get to because it's up at the top of the nether but the gold farm is absolutely amazing this thing is an absolute unit anytime i need experience I need to heal my tools which the pickaxe does need healing uh all that i have to do is call up to this absolute beast right here so this farm definitely required the most work to to build out of all of the farms it's a grind to get all of the magma blocks and then to actually build it it takes a long time it's a massive farm don't get me wrong but it's so cool like magma rings it looks really sweet and then the piglins spawn over there and then you stand here and just take them out like it's insanely insanely easy to use they all funnel into this spot right there and, and experience and gold and it's crazy this farm is so so good but it's definitely late game like it's a huge huge project but it's amazing and then uh, you pair this thing with the barter farm and you have a use for all of the gold that you get from this thing, which is going to be a lot. You also get a lot of rotten flesh too. You can sell this stuff to like a villager. I actually need to do that pretty soon. And then swords too, which you can smelt down to nuggets. Gold farm, third best farm in this world. Highly recommend building it but it's a project all right my number two farm my second best farm one of my favorite farms of all time once i learned about this farm and how to build it i never went back this farm is a unit this thing is amazing the easiest best food farm in the game the cow crusher right here i have two of these things in the world i have one over here one over at the flower forest all you need to get this thing started two cows and a couple blocks you can build this thing easily on your first day in the game it is crazy like the cows go in the center you grab the wheat you feed them i must have fed them recently so they're not eating right now but this thing is the best thing in the world and you can build it on like i said like your first day and then have the best food in the game and a ton of leather too like an absurd amount it's so good it will literally ruin your experience with food like once you build that thing in in the game any other food farm it just does not compare it's nowhere near as good as that food farm like no matter what there's nothing that you can do to change it and you'll need to build one in every single world so if you don't want that to happen don't build this thing ever it's it's overpowered it's crazy so what does that leave us with one final farm the best farm in this world and uh, to make it a little bit more spicy it's an originally designed farm too the amazing the simple the small compact iron farm right here this iron farm is actually an original design and, and kind of cool thing about it a couple of other people have used it in videos like pewdiepie and stuff it's like absurd like hey i don't know i'm constantly like fanboying over this stuff is crazy but the iron farm is a no-brainer once i built this iron farm everything about this world changed because it's literally free infinite iron and iron you use it in redstone you use it for tools earlier on you use it for like everything and it's a simple farm it's three villagers a zombie a water platform and lava blade down here it's so simple to set up what's funny is for the longest time i actually like wouldn't build an iron farm because i thought they were kind of cheaty like really overpowered which they definitely are probably both but it's amazing once you build one it changes everything it's kind of like the cow crusher once you set one of these things up in your world you're always going to need to set one up because they're really easy to set up and what they get you the free iron it's irreplaceable it's literally irreplaceable like once you have an iron farm you don't need to go into the caves like ever again i mean you need diamonds but if you have diamonds and you get mending and then you upgrade it to netherite and you're just careful then you you have it and you never need to go into the mines again on one side of thing absolutely amazing best farm in the world for sure easily the only farm that could compete would be the cow crusher on the other side of things it's game breaking <laughs> entirely game breaking
So farm tier list, that's how it goes. Farm number three, gold farm. Farm number two, cow farm. Farm number one, iron farm for sure. Absolutely. Those three farms are farms that you definitely need to build in your world 100%. 100% though is going to depend on how you like to play, what you actually like to do. But that's going to do it for all of the farms other than anything trading villager related. Now, uh, last episode in the monstrosity of the temple, I completely forgot comments of the day. I had it ready. Forgot about it. Did you know activated rails make any mobs including you get out of a mine no i didn't know this i literally didn't know this i, I went through the struggle uh, of designing the panda monorail thing i didn't even realize that this is what activated like i thought it was activating uh, the the redstone rail like literally hey i literally which by the way let's check this out so i had these two pandas i think it was uh which one was it it, it was you for sure i think it was you you i think these two pandas bred and then mutated uh are you gonna do it again Mm. Oh, you did it again. You did it again. You did it again. Look at look at those two pandas right there. Those two pandas mutate. Child, get out of the water. This is not good. Not good. Not good. Not good. Very stressful. Get out of the water. Get out of the water. Don't stand in the water. Okay, so there you go. I'm happy that I at least got it on camera. Those two pandas mutate into that panda right there, which is perfect. Uh, the other pandas, though, I'm not even going to try. But, uh, yeah, genuinely had no clue that that's what activator rails do. Definitely good to know that I can use it to get out of the minecart. Like, this is mind-blowing. I don't even need the cactus thing anymore. Maybe I'll replace it. Okay, look. Fine, 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 fine. Maybe you'll breed and create something new? Create something new? No. I'm tired of these rolling pandas. Today's comment of the day. Flashbacks. When Wild Builder Villager Breeder, I will probably never build here, so I won't do the bag. Question is, will you ever do the bag of the Villager Breeder, like, from the Temple episode? Of course I'll do the bag. Of course. I, I just won't be able to show you. Uh, the back is 100% done, and the episode is also 100% over and done. Thank you for watching today's episode. I hope you enjoyed it. Very different. Maybe I'll do another episode like this at some point in the future once we have more farms, because we're still missing a couple big ones, like the Ocean Monument Farm, Raid Farm, e even like a Melon Farm. That's gonna do it, though, for today's video. If you enjoyed it, now is the perfect moment, quite literally, to leave a like and subscribe. If you haven't subscribed yet, subscribe today big shout out to my patrons mr pd wash hush sound 34 thank you all for watching i'll see you in the next video it's been me your boy waddles goodbye